Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You are tuned in with Cindy. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my life as a pro athlete, but in this video, I'm going to talk about my travel arrangements, who helps me with my travel, how I deal with jet lag, how I deal with a bad race, all that good stuff. So some more behind the scenes information and just some things that people ask me, whether you're looking forward to living this lifestyle or you just don't really know what it's like in this lifestyle. So yeah, this video is for more information on that. I want to remind you guys that I post weekly content on this channel and I discuss my life as a pro and my food and the recipes I've been enjoying as well as videos of my husband John. So if you are interested, you should subscribe so you don't miss out and hit that notifications bell so you'll be alerted for the next post. So the first thing I'm going to be discussing is kind of how I start my competition season, who helps me plan it, who sets up my plane arrangements and all that good stuff. So at the beginning of each season, my coach and I discuss some of the races that I'm going to be going to and just some of the things that I want to accomplish that year. So we discuss how many races I want to get in, some of the relays. Afterwards, I go to my agent and my agent is the person that gets me into these meets, sets me up, my planes and everything that kind of goes into that. So I'll talk to my agent and my coach together because they're kind of in communication in that regard. We discuss where I'm going. Um, he lays out all of the, the meets that I could get into, the potential meets I could get into, or just races that could be helpful for me within the season. And so after we plan all that out, I then start booking my flights. So I don't actually book my flights, the agency does. And so they book all of my flights. They get me there at the times that make the most sense. So typically I will get to a track meet about three to two days before the race, just to kind of get my legs accumulated, or accumulated, <laughs> just to get my legs acclimated. Sometimes if it's not too far from where I live, I'll go the day before. Um, but for the most part, it's about two days. And if it's like something overseas, uh, I give it about three to four days. Travel can take a lot out of you. I know for me personally, my legs take a lot of time to adjust. So everybody is different, but I know I need a few more days sometimes to kind of get into the swing of things. So dealing with jet lag is something that I kind of struggle with. It is hard, especially when you're going overseas, to deal with six hour difference, eight hour difference, you name it. We've been to meets where, yeah, there was eight hours and I think it was somewhere in Asia, I think China. China was a big difference for me and so, or even Doha, whenever I go over there, I definitely struggle with the time difference. So something I try to do personally is I focus on getting enough sleep um, on the plane. And so if I get to the plane and I know that the people, the time zone that I'm in is currently sleeping, I try to do the same thing that they're doing. So my goal is to sleep on the plane if I can. And so I force myself to get a few hours and just get acclimated to their time zone as quick as possible because that's really, really hard to do sometimes. Um, so yeah, that typically helps me is just like sleeping on the plane, getting as much rest as I can. But then as soon as the day comes, like for instance, I get to Europe and it's the morning or maybe let's say like 2 p.m. and I know I'm going to have to go to sleep in six hours, I don't try a nap. So as soon as I get there, I force myself to stay awake so that I can quickly get adjusted. Because if you just nap all throughout the day, then at nighttime you're wide awake and then you just don't sleep and you never get on that pattern or that routine. So for me, I have to just like really force myself to get adjusted to what they're doing and yeah, what's gonna help me, I guess, do better and feel more rested. So just being intentional because if I don't focus on my recovery quickly, I will not do well overseas or at a meet that's really far just because I don't adjust. So while I'm on the plane, I like to hydrate. I like to force myself to, you know, have Pedialyte or have some type of electrolytes that gets, you know, the hydration flowing because as you know, when you travel, you get very dehydrated quickly. So I'm not gonna lie y'all, the food is not usually that great. It, I mean, it depends on the meat, I'll give you that, because at Europeans, for instance, a few weeks ago, the food was actually pretty good. You're kind of just eating because you have to eat, and that's unfortunate because it's nice to enjoy food, right? So something I have to do is, I like to bring snacks on my flights and with me, things that I know I like and healthy things as well. That's really helpful is just to have a lot of snacks because I get really, hungry and I love snacking, but it's also easy when you travel to just eat unhealthy because you're like, well, I don't have any access to anything. So thinking ahead, and that's something that John helps me with a lot is, we'll plan together what I'm gonna need and the food that's gonna help me when I might not like the hotel food. Another little thing that we do is we get foods that 
you know, only, they're still really healthy. They have like freeze dried foods, which are like foods that campers eat. And I'll have that as like a backup just in case if it is disgusting. But you can literally add water and it makes a whole meal for you. And I usually won't use it if the food is good. It's just a good backup to have. And so that's something I started doing this year and I'm really happy that I had the opportunity because nobody has time to be hungry, especially when you're gonna go compete. Like you have to be fueled and your body's gotta feel good, right? So that's something I like to do is just to be prepared, plan ahead, have all the snacks, have all the hydration that you need. I, I typically like to come with a water bottle because some meats provide you with water, some don't. And so you might be out of luck and you might have to find a store to find water. And it's just easier to have your own water. If I'm at Europe, I typically will drink the water there out of the tap. Um, some countries I will not because it's as you know, it's hard uh, to always drink from different countries' waters, but for the most part, if I don't have access to bottled water, I fill that up, and that's really, really helpful. All right, let's talk about plane delays and missing your flights, because that's something <laughs> I've had my fair share of experiences with. So I'll give you guys an example. I was headed to Italy. This was like my first time traveling overseas, actually, by myself for competition. My first pro race, I was so excited, you know, just really ready to, to do well and <sighs> did not prep well at all. I was packing very late. My parents were dropping me off, so they had some stuff they were doing. And so all that to say, I got to the airport with like 40 minutes left to spare. You guys, do not do that. If you are traveling to a different country, don't get to the airport 45 minutes before. You might make it on your plane, which I did, but your bags most likely won't. So that's what happened to me. So I actually made my flight, got to Italy. My bags did not come with me. And because I was a rookie, I did not pack a lot of things in my carry-on. So that's another thing that I recommend is always have your competition stuff, any little thing like makeup, if you like that, contacts, anything that's really important for you, keep that with you in your carry-on because if this happens, you're not gonna be you know, struggling. You're gonna be like, well, I have what I need and the other things will come when they come. So I didn't have the ability to just say, okay, I can compete because I didn't have a uniform. So yeah, I had to like, what did I even do? I had to ask a friend for one of her extra uniforms. I think I had a pair of spikes, so I was lucky in that regard, but it was a mess. I had to get so many things, like random stuff from people, and that was really bad. So making sure you're planning to just in case something happens with a delay or missed flight. Um, I've had plenty of times where it was out of my control that my plane was delayed and I missed my other flight and then my bag still had issues with that. So there was just plenty of times that there's things out of your control. You don't know what's gonna happen. So having your stuff is really helpful. And not getting stressed at that first meet in Italy, I definitely like got overwhelmed and scared and I was mad and I was just really sad that I didn't have my bag, but I got my bag eventually. You're most likely gonna get your bag back. It's just a matter of time, but I had to compete. So that was the most nerve wracking part. So just don't, don't be like me and make sure you're prepared in that regard because that was not fun. But yes, traveling can be annoying. There's a lot of things outside of your control and things that really frustrate you. I tend to get really mad and I'm not gonna lie, with COVID, travel has been even worse because you have to sign a whole bunch of papers, take all these tests, which I mean, I understand they're trying to keep us all safe and healthy, I get it, but it can get a little overwhelming at times. And so if travel wasn't bad enough, you already have COVID on top of it. So my biggest goal at the moment is just to get to the airport with optimal time. So much time that I'm not even worried or stressed and I can take my time to get to my gate, eat my food, all that good stuff. Another thing that we have to deal with as professional athletes is not really knowing anyone while you travel. So I usually travel by myself. If I'm lucky enough to have Tiffany with me, my sister, that's awesome. But most of the time I'm by myself and you know, it does get lonely. It does get um, a little nerve wracking when you don't know, okay, am I supposed to be here? Am I supposed to be here? Or once you get to the location you're supposed to be at, you have to figure out who's picking you up. So I have to be in contact with my agent, but sometimes my agent's sleeping because of the time zones. So sometimes it can get really stressful and lonely, but something I've learned is just, you know, being cordial with the people who are there. If you see somebody who looks similar to you when it comes to like, maybe they have athletic gear on, most likely they're there for the meet as well. So I'm gonna be talking to them. Communicating with other people is what really helps me. But before I leave, I like to make sure that, uh, you know, I know that there's gonna be somebody picking me up. I know there's a shuttle. Like I ask all those questions to my agent before I leave because if I don't, and I travel to a different time zone. And sometimes even when you get to the new time zone, another thing is your phone might not be working. 
So I had to deal with that one of my first meets. I didn't know that my phone was gonna act silly overseas. There were just so many things like that I struggled with when I first came out that, you know, that you really don't know until you just deal with. So asking questions, never be afraid to just ask somebody if they know something. So if you're at an airport and you don't know where to go or who's with you, then just ask. Don't be afraid. That's something I had to get very comfortable with. It's like, okay, I don't know which gamble to go to. I don't know what to do here. Like I just gotta communicate and ask. So don't be, don't feel like you're dumb or stupid, like do it. <laughs> so that's, that's one of my recommendations when it comes to dealing with not knowing anyone. It's just talk to other people, communicate. Communicate with your agent, communicate with your coach, making sure you know everything before you get on that plane. Checking with your phone providers to make sure you have an international plan because like I said, I struggled with that at first. So those are just a few tips that I think really would be helpful to know before you start traveling. And last but not least, I wanna discuss a little bit about dealing with bad races while you're overseas. So, or just traveling in general. You're bound to have a race that didn't go the way you planned. Nobody's perfect. Nobody has the perfect meet that just goes perfectly at all times. And it can be lonely. Like I said, sometimes time differences, like you might have a meet that's at like 11 a.m., but it's still 5 a.m. in the other country you're at. So you can't communicate with your coach and you feel sad and nobody there really knows you. So there's like this whole like, what do I do? Who do I talk to? This is hard. And one thing I had to learn is at the end of the day, this is a job. I love my sport. I'm gonna have bad days and good days in my job. Not being too hard on yourself. If you went out there and competed and did what you needed to do and it didn't go as well as you planned and you know you left it all on the track, just taking the positives and leaving there with confidence, knowing, you know what? I made some good progress, regardless of how the times may have come out or the jump or whatever, it's fine, I'm here and I am able to compete. And if you're healthy, that's another feat in itself. Just really telling myself like, even if my performance doesn't go as planned, that that's not the end of the world. I'll be fine, like it's gonna be okay. So um, yeah, that's not easy. And so just being aware that some meets won't go well and right away you might not have anybody there to talk to you. But there's also other athletes who may be experiencing very similar things that you can be talking to. So. I'll be sad sometimes and then there's other athletes who didn't have their good performance or there's athletes who did. Just talk about things with other people and you know, that's what helps me is just being able to get my mind off of myself, you know, like uh, just going and changing the topic, maybe moving on. So when I get back to my hotel room, I focus on something else that's not about track. If I can, if I can, like I take the positives, I learn from my, my mistakes and I move on and I try to focus on it because if you don't move on, your next race, which maybe two days later, like sometimes you literally race back to back, even the next day, it won't go well. Like if you're just focused on the last race, you can't take that into your next race. So that's just a little bit of advice that I have dealing with bad competitions. So I hope this video gave you some more insight as to what travel is like as a pro athlete. I know that some people like the thought of doing this career or they just wanna understand more about it. So I hope this is you know informative and helps you if this is something you're preparing to do. So I'll definitely be making more videos just like this one, as well as just different content ideas with food and things that help me stay healthy and my relationship. So like I said before, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below, something you might have found interesting or a question or something you may have. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back. Nope, head is cut off. All right. Really? Y'all would come outside right now. Sorry, there's like a trash can person outside.